And then I'm walking along, pictures behind me, and I've got my rifle at the trail, and, um, and then all of a sudden, I'm like laying on the flat of my back, looking up at the sky. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, bright blue sky, and it's black. It's dark, it's dusty, it's incredibly quiet. And as the rocks and debris sort of start falling, dissipate, and I can see the sky, um, I'm you know, dazed and confused about why and what the hell has just happened. Um, I get up on my elbows, and I immediately knew what had happened. I could see my metal detector was obliterated all over the place. Um, I, my rifle was snapped in half and sent off into the HESCO baskets to the right. I could see the blast crater next to me. I could see the blood, blood spraying out of my legs like a fire hose. Um, and that's when the pain hit me, like a freight train. And it wasn't just my legs that were sore. It was my ears, my tongue, my hands. My, my back, my ass, everything about my body was under attack. And they carried me along to where the vehicles were in a harbour. And it's nice to not have to explain what that is. Um, and they carried me along, and, and uh, every step of the way, I feel like I'm going to fall off it. And I'm saying, don't you drop me, don't you drop me. And um, I could see, you know, some of the guys were crying as they were carrying the stretcher. And, and you know, I could see, see and feel the, the, the hurt that they were also feeling, that trauma. And I said to them, boys, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I will we'll go to the Paralympics or something like that. And I thought, oh, that's a bit weird. But um, I said, oh, I won't be in the green and gold, though. I'll be in the black and white. And I thought, oh, I suppose he walked to the chopper then. <laughs> so, yeah, and that got to meet Rachel, my, my girlfriend, now my wife, um, at the plane door. And, and um, this, this photo here is a couple of weeks after that, that reunion. And it was a difficult reunion because I felt like I'd let her down. I changed ultimately and... and drastically the course of our lives and, and where we were going and what we were going to do. And this photo I leave in because this photo, about five minutes after it, I had a massive breakdown. I was the first time I was able to move myself from the bed onto the wheelchair. It was the first time by myself, um, you know, having uh, the nurses and, and the, the wardies to do everything for me was, was great. But when you have to actually have to be independent, it's a really um, sinking feeling to actually, this is my reality, and I'm now a disabled person. I'm now a person that requires prosthetics, wheelchairs, driving modification, shower cares, just to have a normal life. And, and that was something that was very difficult for me, a 24-year-old fit, healthy guy. Um, all that, to me, was now taken away, and now I was sort of wheelchair-bound. And not understanding about what the opportunities were, and that's where Rachel came in, and you know, we went off to physio, and she said, I think you should set goals, thinking about who you are and where you're going, what you're gonna do with yourself, and try and aim for something, have something to look forward to, something to progress towards, to push yourself, and you know, find that opportunity within what your situation is. And having that opportunity to, to be pushed along by, by the, the team around me, which is really important. And I think, how do we become high performance? It's generally the team around us. And the team around us make it all happen. They bring the boats along, they book the travel, they um, you know, provide the, the physiology and the biomechanics. And these guys can you know, inflict a lot of pain on people in, in, in their sessions and things like that. Um, but this is the brains behind the on-water coaching staff and the, the coaching staff, and that's how we elevate with our team around us, our specialisations of these people uh, to bring along to produce an athlete. And I'm just one athlete, and as you can see, there's probably, what, like 10, 10 people all supporting me and all sort of pushing along in their own goals and ambitions that make, make it possible uh, to, to be a high-performance athlete. And, you know, what, what does a day look like? A day um, can be, you know, Generally, most of the same, it's very, very monotonous, very routine, and I like that, and that's something I think the military uh, instills in us, having that routine, having that process of, of achieving the same tasks, but enhancing them every day. But it's also something that gets very fatiguing, and um, you know, to try and be better than you were the day before, day on, day out, is very, very difficult, and uh, this is sort of, a, a, sort of a snapshot of a day. It's an How amazing feeling to, to get to that line to say that I'd get to the Paralympic Games and achieve it was a, an amazing feeling. And when I crossed that line, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a feeling of, of success. It wasn't a feeling of, of joy, which I expected. It was, a, it was a feeling of absolute and utter relief. You know, I'd 
like I said, I set those goals and I was achieving them, not just for me, but the people that came along that journey with me, all those staff, all my friends, all my family, all my mates in the army, you know, all those people that helped save my life and got me to where I was now. And having that moment on the podium was pretty cool because that's when I actually felt like I'd succeeded. And, you know, since being injured in Afghanistan, I've been given a new perspective on life. And you know, whether that is uh, you know, becoming a disabled person or winning a silver medal when you work so hard to get gold. You know, all of these things have made me the person I am today. And I often get asked, would I, would, would I go back and change what happened to me in Afghanistan? And, and I should absolutely not. It's, it's allowed me to pursue a, a direction, make friends, have opportunities that I would never have had otherwise. And, and that's pretty much why it is a triumph over tragedy. So thank you very much.